This is Bold TV. You are listening to us this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning. It's Bold TV, beautiful, outstanding ladies with disability TV right on your screen at this time. We warmly welcome you to yet another interesting episode of the show where we talk about issues surrounding women with disabilities in Nigeria, in the world, in the universe. Name it, we talk about these things as they come. And today is not going to be an exception. We've got a topic to talk about. But to start with, I would like my ladies uh, to kindly introduce themselves to you and we would set the ball rolling. Okay, good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode. My name is Afia Wettem. I'm a medical lab scientist. I'm based in New York. I use a wheelchair from final cord injury and I'm a member of Bold Hearts Initiative. Hi, hi everyone, a beautiful morning to you. My name is Freki and Estienne. I'm based in Port Harcourt, River State, the EG of Fake Foundation, a public health professional, among other things. I'm also a member of Bold Hearts Network. I identify the one with disability because I use a wheelchair from spinal cord. Thank you. Hello, good morning, good morning ladies, good morning viewers. I remain on Saki Teresa Georgie, residing in Port Harcourt River State. Work with Fair Care Foundation, member of World Health Initiative, Disability Rights Advocate, Holy Warrior. I'm so glad to be here, thank you. Thank you very much, Osaki, for that one. Uh, while Afyong helps with the introduction of Ellen, Helen is appearing as a guest and uh, Unfortunately, our network is really unfavorable, so she would be typing her responses in the chat box while the ladies do justice to reading it. So, Afion, please help us with Ellen's introduction. So, our guest today is Helen Bralatai Ayes, also known as Helen B. She's a musician and um, she's from Bielsa State but lives in Potapot. Welcome, Helen. Thank you very much, Afian, for that one. So straight to our topic of discourse today. Um, hmm. These are really difficult times all over the world. You have inflation rates going up here and there in the UK. Here in Nigeria, we've had, you know, um, the triple effect of uh, the subsidy removal, uh, a new administration, and a whole lot of that. Not forgetting the war going on between Russia and Ukraine, uh, which is also making world economies uh, suffer. And women with disabilities are not left on this ladder. We are not left out. We are humans too. We go to the market, we have a job. Some of us do not have a job. Some of us are self-employed. So we fall into the line of, you know, people who are badly affected when there is some kind of financial crisis. Hence, the need to talk about how to manage ourselves during difficulty. And that's why we are talking about financial management during difficult times. Uh, you would agree with me that these are trying times and um, it's, it's a rough time to be in Nigeria or anywhere else if we must be sincere with ourselves. And only the tough would weather the storm. So how do we weather the storm? How do we stay afloat? How do we come out, I mean, shining and going? That is what the ladies and myself are going to be discussing. Lest I forget, my name is Uluwa Tomisi Adeyefa. I am your host for today. And uh, I am a broadcast journalist, a sound engineer, a gender and disability rights advocate. I reside in Abel Kuta, Open State. Feels good to be here. So, ladies, my question, uh, firstly to Osaki, uh, would go, 
what would you define as a difficult time? What to you is a difficult time? Thank you, Tomisi. Okay, difficult time for me. Like the word is difficult. <laughs> it's something that's not easy. A time where challenges, it's all over you, like trying to overwhelm the person, struggling to come out and you're not seeing the brighter side. And even though you see the brighter side, it's very slim. Now come to the final uh, topic, uh, what, like, what, what you just asked. Difficult time with that period that your, your challenges are like more than your finance, more than what you can handle at that point in time. Thank you. So um, when we talk about difficult times, for me, that would be, you know, um, generally, that would be inability to cope, you know, with challenges as they come, or, you know, a time where it seems like I'm not mentally prepared for the challenges as they come. And then, you know, with regards to finances, where the bills uh, seem to overwhelm the income. And, you know, as I always say, no commot. It's just not, the account is not balancing. Yeah? The account is refusing to balance, so, you know, just commot. That is where, you know, I consider what I consider a difficult time. So for me, difficult times are times that are not easy. And um, so that simply means that there are times where things you would have done normally, easily, without blinking, they now become a bit hard. You have to put extra effort to achieve. So with reference to our topic, which has to do with financial management, I would say that when it comes to, or when we say difficult times in the case of finances, it simply means that like our film said, what are new level? Difficult times are times when things that were done easily initially uh, become a bit stressful to do. So that's my response. So you may want to read Helen's response. Okay, um, Helen says that um, difficult times refers to challenges that one faces and they can't handle it. So we have laid the foundation we talked about difficult times from each person's perspective what difficult times means to each of us in nigeria it is currently very difficult times now we're going to go to the core message you know our core topic which is how you can manage your finances so we are going to talk we have, i need to ask why is it necessary to manage your finances during difficult times okay let's start with you know do you have to wait until things get difficult before you do it and then we we'll move on to how to actually do it when things are tough all right so my response to the first question of, of must we wait the answer would be ideally no but does somebody know when difficult times will come the answer still is not necessarily could have projections, ideas, or you may not know how difficult a time can come. But must you wait for difficult times before you begin to put in cushions? Not necessarily. One of the ways, okay, we're not the one of the ways out of said savings is a great way to be able to manage down times. So this is why I'm going to put it, let me put it in perspective. Will you always be up financially? The answer is no. Anybody who thinks that and um, financial status may be up and up all the time and you are you're, you're, you're in error the truth of the matter is that when it comes to one's finances and when it comes to income flow when it comes to inflow or when it comes to what you need to expend monies for based on available income it differs so there will always be up times and down times and you mustn't wait for difficult times to hit you before you develop some kind of strategy to manage them so i hope that answers Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, with uh, the, the question we know was, do we need to, do you wait until things get tough? Then you now start thinking of preparing. It's like knowing that you're going to go out tomorrow 
and then today you have not you know started making arrangements about how you're going to move about where you are going to and you know certain things you need to put in place any any general will tell you that don't prepare for war when the war starts you prepare for war in a time of peace so osaki let's hear from you all right thank you uh like what frecky said earlier on ideally is no and uh, you, you don't have to be true is that as your income is coming just have supposing something happens so that means automatically you are saving but even when your income is not enough to save try and see how you can work within the cycle of your income because the truth is that if you can manage the way the income comes like you are earning 30 or 20,000 and you try and see that your challenges does not exceed that regular incomes are going and even when emergency happens somehow somehow you might be able to cope because the emergency will not be too much for you and you'll be able to say okay let me have a helping hand because before now you've never um left uh, you've, you've, you've already worked within your uh your income so some so you, you don't have to wait but work within the cycle of how your income comes so that you don't have a larger problem so that's all i can say for now thank you okay before i actually hand over to tommy singh who is back let me just um, read Helen's um, response to the question. She says, nobody has to wait till they get to a certain level before they start handling and managing their finances. So we are all, you know, in agreement that we really need to prepare ahead of time. Okay, Helen also added that money is a visitor. So when your visitor comes, you must make sure that you know that this visitor will not always be there and you make sure that you have a guest room and a place where you can put some spare of the visitor to prepare for. So I think the major, one major reason why we, you know, to have knowledge of financial management is because difficult times will always come. Having established the need for financial management during difficult times, we talked about what difficult times mean to us. I want to find out, I mean, in Nigeria right now, we are all a witness to uh, subsidy removal by the president, Paula Ahmed, and this has really affected a lot of things, food, commodities, transportation, name it. Even these days when you have 10,000 Naira, it's equivalent to having 2,000 Naira, because I mean, you discover that what you can literally buy with 10,000 Naira you know, some months, some weeks ago, you can no longer buy them. And this price is keep sorry, like it's not waiting. I mean, in the space of two months, we've had, uh, you know, increase in the price of premium motor spirits, that's petrol, in a very long time. And here, as women with disabilities, we say, oh, go out, attend places, you know, you don't need to stay indoors you know mix up socialize go to work don't be lazy we say all of those things and i'm glad that the ladies i'm having on, on board here today you know some of us are in the corporate world some of us are in the commercial space and we, we, we know how these things work so how have you been surviving i mean personally now what are those measures that you put in place to ensure that you do not go down thank you Right. Thank you for missing. So how do we manage in these times in Nigeria? I think um, um, the power of decision making and prioritizing was come up very strongly at this time. Um, the truth of the matter is in achieving things, there are different ways to achieve a thing. It's like you want to go on a journey, you have a destination in mind. Usually there are different ways to be able to get to your destination. For example, if a person is going from the southern part of Nigeria to the central part, north, north central, you can choose to use road, you can choose to fly. If you have grace, you can do a marathon and trek. You know where you're going to. So calling for strategies on how to manage oneself becomes very important. And the strategy I would say is how to achieve that goal that you have placed. So the first thing you want to do is must I do this thing? That's the first question you want to ask yourself. Must I go here? Must I spend this money? Is there a better option 
to get this done, you know, considering the times. Sometimes the decision that one has to make will be very hard considering the default times. Let me give an instance. I've seen people that because of how difficult maybe things were with respect to an increase in library, um, in the cost of living, I've seen families where they had to have a meeting with children and tell them that with respect to the school that you were in last year, you will not be able to take it back. Sending me to another school. Those are some of the compromises that people have had to make or will have to make to be able to adjust to balance um, considering the difficulties. We've seen where school fees currently have been increased, even in the Unity schools. And where people could afford and then it's and and the increase we're not we're not talking about increase that is maybe 10 percent we're talking about 150 percent increase 122 percent increase in school fees so how does one manage and also considering that the minimum wage is not increasing so some hard decisions that's what i'm trying to say have have will have to be made at this time where um so where you don't you don't compromise quality but you look at can i afford this quality but at a cheaper rate you may need to make those kind of hard decisions at this time another thing i would say in managing is uh, man this is not the time to want to vogue or trend like uh -uh. this has nothing to do with what anybody thinks about what you're doing like it does you know don't think about ban wagon effect just think about your own priorities what works for you at this time so don't want to do oh i want to fc i want to do what everybody's doing you hang you hang better hanging so those mind your lane those work out your lane and we're not like them they're the best at this time at those end and just try to be do you at this time i would really advise that thank you all right so you know one thing i will say is that we've all agreed you don't have to wait you don't have to wait. So one thing I will advise anyone is that you know, it's never too late to develop and adopt a savings culture. Don't wait until when things get tough. Because when things get tough, you will not have, you will not be thinking of putting aside because you are looking for what, where to get, to add to what is already there to meet the demands. So develop a savings culture whereby you're putting something aside. So that in times like this, you know, some, some in financial circles is called an emergency fund. Have where you put a certain amount, no matter how small. You know, someone will tell you, oh, the, the money I'm earning is not so much. Brother or sister, whoever it is, you no matter how little you earn, always take out a percentage and keep aside. Even if it's five, five hundred, even the woman in the market selling Perewinko does a contribution. Every day she sells, she takes out a portion and puts it in an osusu. And at the end of the month, she has a lump sum she can collect, put back in her business, or take care of any pressing needs. It's not because what she has is it's plenty. You start from, if you can't save when you have little, you even if you have a million, even if you're earning millions, you will not be able to save. So develop a savings culture. Put aside something. Because when that day comes, at least when you fall, there will be small something to cushion you. You won't hit your bum bum on the Something will at least support you small. And then another thing is that get information. Like Freki said, the decisions you make will have to change. You see that I used to eat two, two eggs. So I cannot eat one egg. It's a lie. You will eat half if possible. If that is the only way to make sure that the egg will last the end of the month, you will eat half egg. Eh? Some of us adults are still trying to eat children's kind of portion. Cut down. You may have to be, you know, think about, okay, is there a way I can get more for less? Usually bulk buying is, is quite, you know, is good. It's usually cheaper. So if you have a family, and you know, in my family, we eat like 1,000 Naira Gary in a week. You now plan in a month how much is that? If you now go to buy that quantity in bulk, you would pay less than if you were to buy one more thousand. So think like that. Buy in bulk. And then like calculate. If somebody, well, you know, limit the O and B. Think of uh, before you leave your house, transportation is expensive. 
before you leave, plan your movement. Think, is it necessary for me to be there? Or can I send something in place of me going there? These are some of the practical things you can do to make sure that you are able to survive. You may need to make sacrifices here and there, but ultimately, somehow, we will all get through it. All right, thank, thank you very you. much, Afiog. Um, I just want to, you know, say something before Osaki comes up with our opinion. Um, this thing you're talking about, you know, knowing where to go at a particular, I mean, set your priorities right ahead, setting your priorities right, what you really need, and do away with what you don't need. And then uh, Frankie talked about this is not the time to trend and uh, <laughs> be all out there makes me remember there's this thing they do in my culture as a new mom you know when your baby is uh six weeks or thereabout you take your baby around to greet people your in-law family especially the very important persons in the family maybe your mother-in-law your mom and um, and then you go around visiting okay for me who is a new mom I was having this conversation with a friend and I said, this is not even the time to go and be carrying baby to go and greet anybody. Because I mean, the people you even want to go and greet are probably struggling to eat themselves. And usually when you go on those journeys, it's expected that the person you are going to visit is going to give you money, is going to buy you things. Um, that's the culture. <laughs> so it's not even the time to do such thing. So it means that we are in a time where you also consider other people. Don't just go and drop your burden on them because they also have got burden. They also have got what is bothering them. They've got, you know, what they are trying to manage. And so this is the time to stay in your house if you can. Stay in your lane if you can. It's not It's not um, only houses. Sometimes don't pass your boundary, you know, stay in your lane. And also this is not the time to go looking for trouble because, I mean, everybody is angry. Everybody is frustrated. Everybody is trying to see how they can manage. So anger, temper are flaring. And so it should be well that while we are trying to manage our finances, we also manage our attitude and manage our emotions. I just wanted to add that uh, to, to, to the discourse. So, Saki, let's have your opinion and let's also have you read out Ellen's opinion. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Tommy. See, as for me, uh, what I think I do is just to marry, manage my um, budget within my um, income. Whatever I want to spend should be within the cycle of what I can get. And I also say I, I try to take it one step at a time because at times things happen at the same time. So many things will just happen that you're like, hey, what will I do? So I know I just experienced a lot of things like shock in space of two weeks. So don't panic, <laughs> just relax. One at a time, eventually they will all come and go. It might not come the way you expect it, but gradually you overcome it because the, the time is not easy for anybody. Like Freki said, work within your own space, your own lane, forget what the other person is saying because it's how you can manage it. Uh -huh. So it's not why you're, it's not time for competition or comparing. It's time for you to see what can I do at this time, and don't start giving yourself uh, so much thinking or heart attack or start panicking. Or no, 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 no time for that. Just believe that it will all go through and see how you can cope. If you can share with somebody, share. But if you cannot, to relax about it. After a while, it's all clear. So let me read for Helen B. She says, it has to do with the mind now, because if the war in the mind now towards the hardship is not positively deliberated on, it will be chaos. Life now is very tough to continue standing for, for some people. But if their minds function, in a profitable ideas and small savings, it will help. Personally, I love buying stocks in bulk and not one one. And I set my schedule. Though I give and I believe that, okay, though I believe and I give that also my budget too. So that's for Helen. Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much. Um, I want to play the devil's advocate and I will throw this at uh, Freki. Um, okay, so we've all been talking about, you know, working between what you're earning, your income should determine your budget and where, what you spend. Now, in, in, in Nigeria where a minimum wage has been set, but is it across board? You still have people who work and earn 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira, 15, 30,000 naira, and they have to survive in a country where, you know, they don't sell separate food items or commodities for the, I mean, it is what you buy that I buy. So if Afyong is earning 200,000, for instance, and I'm earning 20,000, we'll both go to the same market. There are no different markets for us. How would you say survival will be possible in such an instance? It's just playing the devil's advocate here because I'm sure a lot of viewers will be like, okay, what if I'm not even earning much? I mean, how do I survive? What if I don't even earn as much as during not so difficult times, I can't even feed, I can't even fend for myself properly. Now that it is a difficult time, how do I weather the storm? So we'll just take Afi on the loan, um, sorry, Freki alone on that and we'll move on very quickly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tomisin. So um, this is what I'm going to say, and I say it quite a bit. Earning power is not, or spending power, is not necessarily based on how much you make. There's nobody on this earth that the salary is enough. I would like to really be debunk that myth. Like, I don't know, but I found that as salary they increase, some people's taste to change and increase. So I've learned that money is never enough. I don't know how to explain it. If you check yourself truly, even with the amount of money you earn, your salary has never taken care of you. So I want to encourage somebody out there to think about multiple streams of income. Just make it something that where you do not put all your eggs in one basket, but you do more than your job. That is a true Nigerian. First of all, we have bottling spirit, and this is how you will survive in the world that we live in, especially as a Nigerian. So in addition to, if you're having an inflow through a steady job or a business, you may want to think about multiple streams of income. I personally do too many things, just to be able to do, make ends meet. You must think multiple streams of income. The other thing I would like to mention is this, that um, the consideration of issues when it comes to the problem of minimum wage, not even giving somebody the basic minimum is a real thing. And we're supposed to have the, the Nigerian Labour Congress to be able to fight for the, um, the regular man for those kind of things. Well, I'm here now, this is oncoming strike. I don't know whether it will happen. I didn't say it to, I didn't say it, I just said ahead. So it, these unions are supposed to be the voice of the people where they speak, especially if you're working in organized labor, like there is a current question that the whole Nigerians are asking that everything has increased except minimum wage. And nobody's talking about it. So I believe that that is a question that through the union they're going to be asking. So that's one other way to get one's voices heard. But the average person must begin to think about or understand that nobody's salary really takes care of this. That no matter what you're earning. Because okay. you're earning, okay. so you must consider multiple multiple streams. And you also at the point uh, when it comes to spending, there's frugality involved now. This is not miser. You cannot just be anyhow now. That time has passed. You're not going to spray money. Don't invite me for party, I won't come, I won't spray. <laughs> and let me say this you know, someone was um told me say let mm. just just 30 seconds. Someone was complaining recently to me about you know her child came back to from school for holidays, and you know, sometimes she comes with friends, and this time around they were like, How many people attached to her coming back to come and spend holiday? <laughs> And this is somebody who is just hustling and trying to hold her family together. And you now bring mm. them that people. And I told her, you have to learn to say no. The problem we have is that some people don't know how to say no. Because you will get into trouble. 
you know mm. how it you know where it's pinching you you know how it's doing you so you learn to say whether it's family or friend or whoever you learn to say no so that when you look at your budget this year this month okay small space day okay we can help somebody next this other one you know they you know come out if you like stay with the voice of angels if you know come out you know come out my account is not mm. balanced there is nothing coming to you i will say no i have learned to say no okay i, I think I, i want to add another thing before I, because this is these are practical things i know we are holding the juice sorry but this is biting us ahead, please <laughs> this is biting us badly so another thing that i think we can do i've seen where pride has also affected people from asking so for example in some churches that have welfare funds because people would have seen you as best of way gets they want to apply for maybe they're giving bag of rice that thing happens though. like one time they were giving workers in church rice people right now like i'm pregnant you too my idea is i want the rice don't be angry i need it <laughs> hey, okay we were like ah you follow come i said okay me i follow come i follow come i need this rice so <laughs> All the money says, sometimes we want to lay down pride. If it's a welfare fund that you can access, you might get apply and get it. And then I wanted to just on the side note, Tommy, say you you don't miss an opportunity to raise funds. Why you not do the traditional for raise funds, man? <laughs> <laughs> There is this uh, language. They say, "Oju, I book like my eyes will feel." <laughs> If you go and go to somebody's house now. And they don't have extra funds for you. Well, you almost trek back to your house. <laughs> Haven't said that, ladies. Thank you very much uh, for your input. I would like us to throw a word or two for some categories of persons. Uh, I mean, we'll be looking at an employed woman with disability, unemployed woman with disability, and um, I'm sure some of what we said, you know, having multiple streams of income and all of that will work. But I just want us to reiterate some of this is very shortly and let our viewers out there pick their own. All right, thank you very much, Thomasin. Okay, um, an advice to you when we disability when it comes to financial management. I always that is working employed. Um, I will say, um, um, spend. Think of what's more important. Nothing is in a hurry. There's no emergency when it comes to money spending. Look for the the, the the basic needs that you need to spend on. So if there is really really need, just think of your basic needs. Spend less and take it easy on yourself. And for the woman with disability out there who does not have paid employment. And I think I'll also address the self-employed woman with disability. If you are, you know, if you're unemployed, I think the first thing you will have to do for yourself, you know, we've mentioned here about welfare schemes and things like that. Find out, is there a place within the, at least everybody belongs to some community, some gathering, some group. Find out what is it. There are many... Uh, You know, there are many groups, there are many um, associations that deal with persons, civil society organizations that deal with persons with disability. Find out through those organizations, get information. Is there, are there any job opportunities? Do you need to, you know, improve on your skills? Or maybe you're not literate. Maybe you're not literate or your, your educational qualifications are not enough for you to get paid employment consider is there some a skill i can learn because even now right now the way things are even people who are well educated you know have degrees they are having difficulties getting jobs now we have we are in, a, in an age where skill acquisition is very key now if i see a parent i tell them look no matter how well your child reads they get a first class does so well in school If they don't have certain skills to back up that certificate, they may find themselves stranded in the wider world. So they must, in the course of learning and reading, doing the theory, they need to back it up with some practical skills. So find out, are there skills I can learn? Is there something I can do? 
Because when you're determined to, you know, help yourself, somehow, believe me, this is, I'm not saying this because, oh, I can afford to buy food to eat. I'm telling you because I've been in a position where I was down to zero. I had nothing. But the minute I made up my mind and I was like, no, I, I refuse to stay here. I wrote application, sent, I prayed, and I say, God, is there something I should do? I'm not doing, is there anything I'm not thinking of? Somehow that idea will come. So find a way to upgrade or publicize what you are doing so that more people have access to it. Somehow in that place where you start, help will find you, but start something. So um, I'm supposed to speak to government. <laughs> I'm supposed to speak to government. I think what I'm going to say is this, we have passed that stage in Nigeria where inclusion is not considered, especially for persons with disabilities. And yes, like Tommy Sin said, there are a lot of palliative measures being thrown around, the idea of palliatives. I mean, the Canadian um, High Commissioner um, gave her a grant and it had to do with palliatives around cushioning the effect of, I said it's COVID, but we know it's cushioning the effect of the, um, the high cost of living currently and all sorts that's going around. What I'm going to say is this, two things. At the federal level, there's the tendency to um, give palliatives or survival funds and limit it to persons in the federal capital territory, thinking that you're covered in Nigeria. I think that would be erroneous. So government parastatals need to be able to link up to their counterparts at the state level to reach out to everyone, including persons with disabilities. So for every fund that is being launched out, please let there be a good percentage for persons with disabilities. Why? Because these are marginalized persons, these are vulnerable groups, and anything that has to do with cost of living inadvertently affects persons with disabilities higher. There's a whole thing on the poverty disability cycle, so you can only imagine what that would be like with high cost of living currently as we're facing in these difficult times. So at federal level, let us not limit all these so-called funds, survival for palliative fund to persons in the federal capital territory. There's a tendency for that to always keep happening. Another thing is at state level, state governments need to learn inclusion. Inclusion is something that we find to be deficit in or deficient in at state level interventions. So we want to speak to every state governor. In, in this country, Nigeria, to be inclusive in their funds, in the survival funds, in their palliative funds. The final thing I'm going to say is this. Unfortunately, anytime government rolls out these funds, there is poor accountability. So we have all sorts of persons rolling out funds, people applying, but there's no real accountability because it means like it's free money. Let's learn to be more accountable when it comes to public funds. It's the right thing to do. So those are the things I'm going to say to government. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Frankie. And uh, I hope uh, those that should be listening are listening and they will do the needful because it's easy for us to neglect our persons with disabilities uh, in Nigeria today. I've heard somebody said when uh, regular people have not eaten, I say, ah, ah, is it that persons with disabilities are irregular people? So let's know that these are a part of our society too. We are a part of the society. Helen says in the chat that um, don't be anxious over anything. Uh, let the mind be at peace because right now a lot of negative thoughts will come up. And I think it's very important to get a skill. There are digital skills that um, any person can earn online from. That, um, she's advising persons with disabilities to join civil society organizations, speak out about circumstances to trusted, you know, people around you to reduce suicidal thoughts. Make sure your community is aware of your gifts and talents. Be happy with wherever you find yourself. And finally, people with disabilities should always get information. This isn't the time to be shy. This isn't the time to wear pride. This is the time to, you know, speak out, speak up. I mean, and uh, this is also the time to, like I said earlier, manage your attitude and manage your emotions. You just have to try and manage yourself, manage your finances. And I hope we we'll all come out of this um, present economic situation 
come out of it stronger and better. And when we get to that better side, do not forget saving culture. Do not forget multiple streams of income. Do not forget digitalization and digitization as the case may be. And uh, yes, because another time like this may likely come and you will also need to go through. Having said that, ladies, thank you very much. Our viewers, thank you so much. For being there we've come to the end of the show today uh we've talked about financial management during difficult times we hope you are able to do something and manage yourself to come out stronger and better at the end of this time once again remember uh, to visit our youtube and facebook channel bow tv and uh, like our videos share it keep sharing you know comment send us emails and uh, let's have your comments, your suggestions, your observation about the show. So we come your way again with another interesting episode of Beautiful Outstanding Ladies with Disabilities TV next week, Saturday, same time, 10.30 a.m. We urge you to stay calm, be good, and stay happy. Bye-bye, ladies. Kindly unmute your mic and say bye-bye. Oh!